economic or social phenomena are phenomena of the mind. Uh, of course, we shape these environments according to some ideas. What helps bridge is actually the task of economics proper, catalectics, and as part of that money. So it led to a huge respect for money as a bridge between people with very different mental concepts, very different ideas. Today, we have a conversation with Rahim Takizadigan, a distinguished representative of the Austrian School of Economics in Vienna. Rahim has an extensive background as a professor, having lectured at the University of Liechtenstein, the Vienna University of Economics, and several others. As the author of multiple best-selling books, including Austrian School for Investors and The Zero Interest Trap, he is a sought-after speaker known for his deep insights into economic theory. In this video, Rahim speaks about the core concepts of Austrian economics, which may sound more like psychology than economics by the end of this. He describes how the science of human action is complex. To understand it, you have to understand the history of ideas and how money creates a bridge between people with very different understandings of the world. Join us as Rahim describes some of the main disciplines that the Austrian School of Economics teaches, a tradition and a philosophy that was nearly lost to history. Maybe, just maybe, it can clue us into what the crisis of civilization really is at its core and how we might find a way around it this time. But before we do that, I want to introduce our sponsors, Stampseed, The Orange Pill App, and Swan. Our partners are businesses and people that we respect and our products that we at Bid Intelligence personally use. You're watching 21 Voices. Without further ado, here is Rahim Takizarigan in Madeira, Portugal. What's surprising is when you study economics in Austria these days, uh, you won't hear about the Austrian School of Economics unless I'm your professor. Uh, and uh, so I had to rediscover that tradition in the United States where the school has been kept alive by a bear of threats, uh, I'd say. And uh, I've tried to bring back that Austrian tradition, uh, but also in its more original sense uh, and meaning, um, which used to be a very interdisciplinary tradition. Uh, with a lot of interest in, in practical issues of real people, entrepreneurship, geopolitics, uh, investment, questions of investment and finance, uh, and so on. Uh, and it was one of the uh, cultural and scientific traditions that flourished in the Vienna of the time. It's the whole tradition uh, is driven by respect for reality and the real world. Uh, and, and that's the core of, of uh, the Austrian school, or its essence, I think, is having a deep interest in reality. and don't uh, approach the world with your ideas, with your schemes, uh, with your judgments already in place. So it's a bit openness to how things really are. It's meant to be a study of the legal order of a society. So Karl Menger, the founder, had a background in law and he was an interdisciplinary scholar with a deep interest in practical issues like stock exchange and so on and explaining things. He read voraciously in ethnology and the study of, of different peoples and population to figure out if there are any universal principles uh, he can learn about. And it's a very unusual approach to economics. Uh, Ludwig von Mises proposed to even use a different term. He thought the term economics wasn't that useful, was a bit misleading. He tried to introduce terms which sound very complicated, <laughs> uh, but Thus, you don't have any association with it with praxeology, which is the science of human action. Uh, and uh, as a group, uh, a subgroup of that, of those studies that are very general and broad, it was catalectics. Catalectics uh, comes like praxeology from Old Greek and has two meanings. Catalatin means to exchange, trade, and it also means to turn from a foe to a friend. And that's the process of how society develops. The Austrian school started in a society in crisis, which went through rapid change and was shaped by an interest in understanding the new kind of economy, which started in modernity, where you have high division of labor, global division of labor, uh, dynamic change of industries. And that was the first time in history that you wouldn't do the same job that your father did or your grandfather did. It was really every generation had to find out anew uh, what you should pursue. So I think it's a context that's quite similar to today. Uh, it was a crisis in a society where people didn't know whom to trust anymore. 
So it's the question, how can you know anything? Who's really the expert? And a lot of distrust towards the established authorities. So that's uh, one reason why the Austrian School of Economics put a lot of focus on epistemology. So depending on your interest, you go from uh, Austrian economics to philosophical questions. How can you know something? Um, that uh, was one of the main questions during the Mises Circle, which I think was the peak development of the Austrian school. It's an open, critical, very interdisciplinary uh, debate and, and trying to understand uh, together what's actually happening in the world right now and how can you know anything about it? Who, who can you trust? What can you trust? What does that mean? Uh, what's the importance even of trust uh, in society? All those questions then arise, but triggered by your particular interests, needs, challenges, problems. They seem very philosophical. At the time, people thought it was a psychological tradition. Psychology has been used mainly by the Freudians and has been turned into a tool of therapy, maybe even expert judgments in front of courts uh, on a very weak scientific basis. Please bear with us for a quick message from our sponsors. These videos take a lot of time to make, and we've partnered with brands we trust like Stampseed and the Orange Pill app in order to get the funding we need to bring you these videos every week. Don't store your Bitcoin in cold storage without stamping your seed phrase on an indestructible titanium plate. Stamp seed is fireproof, rust-proof, impact-proof, and easy to hide. It has no loose parts and will give you ultimate peace of mind that your Bitcoin is safe and sound for the long term. Click the link in the description below for 15% off your stamping kit. When I finally got Bitcoin, it hit me like a lightning bolt. It was the currency of the future, the only money that truly mattered. But there was a problem. I didn't know anyone else that thought like me. That is until I discovered the Orange Pill app. Suddenly I was connected with a network of like-minded Bitcoin enthusiasts right in my own city. The Orange Pill app is more than just a social network. It's a community of passionate individuals determined to change the world, one Satoshi at a time. This series is brought to you by Swan and created by Bit Intelligence. Remember to like this video and subscribe to both our channels for more videos like this every week. Thanks for watching. The members of the Austrian school realized that economic or social phenomena are phenomena of the mind. Uh, it's our preferences are shaped in our mind. Uh, so it's not really uh, that much materialistic in the sense that we are determined by our environment. It's we shape our environments and uh, of course we shape these environments according to some ideas. Uh, so no one is immune from the importance of ideas, just most people are not aware where those ideas come from. Uh, so it uh, led to a respect for ideas and in the history I of ideas and, and understanding our mental concepts. Uh, so it's, there, there's the link that through our action, uh, these philosophies have a tremendously important practical result in the world. Thus, even from the very practical side of Austrian economics, which from the beginning had a deep interest in the monetary structures, finance, uh, the exchanges, entrepreneurship, and the uncertainty, and so on, uh, they realized, of course, that that's not a clean experimental setup. Uh, but it's all shaped uh, by ideas and, and by the geopolitics of the time and there are a lot of distortions. But what helps bridge is actually the task of economics proper, catalectics, and as part of that money. So it led to a huge respect for money as a bridge between people with very different mental concepts, very different ideas, very different cultures. And that's uh, only there that money really becomes important uh, because it's the neutral link, the neutral bridge. Uh, and that's why Mises realized the most important part of economics or praxeology really is that catalectics is uh, having links between foreigners uh, to then create networks of win-win relationships uh, and then uh, growing wealth, uh, not only material wealth, of course, but intellectual wealth, cultural wealth, uh, and so on. And it was that, that interest in, in that civilizational process uh, and that led then also to the deep interest in where the crisis of civilization came from. Where do you feel like the crisis of civilization came from? One trigger certainly uh, was the loss of legitimacy of the traditional religions. 
Uh, of course, there were reasons for that, so that's not the initial cause. Uh, it, uh, but uh, the result at the time was that religion didn't seem to offer the proper mental concepts to understand the world uh, because it was changing so fast. And then people, of course, are seeking for something to fill the vacuum, to get orientation anew. That was the big issue at the time. What arises, interestingly, when people believe in nothing, they start believing in everything and all kind of crazy ideas came up. Vienna of the time was unusual that you could go to a coffee shop and meet Trotsky, Hitler, Stalin at the same coffee shop and run into these guys. No one knew them at the time, but they were like brooding uh, on their crazy ideas. Uh, and it's all about that lack of orientation and figuring out how you can find identity and but in a kind of scientism it's where you're just interested in the power like knowledge brings power but even more the status uh, that you get that's why marx was all about like a scientifically predetermined way the only proper way things will develop uh, even a history of ideas is not enough to explain it because for most people ideas are just the concepts that they then adopt uh, but answer to something much deeper and that's a sense of a longing for meaning and the longing for identity and so shape like the societal structure, where do I fit in? Uh, what's the proper structure? What's my place within it? And uh, he realized you have to do political theology in order to understand the crisis of civilization. So I think that's one of the outgrowths uh, of the Austrian school um, and, and this interest in, in the crisis of civilization going really deep uh, into the soul, <laughs> even the myths and the archetypes and the dreams and so on to explain what's really happening deep inside. People that are shaken by an order uh, going down. What if history had been different? If the devastation of Europe in the early and mid 20th century hadn't obliterated many traditions, would the Austrian school have a stronger presence in today's education system? Would we have more balanced considerations for our economy? Or would the world still have evolved into the runaway fiat system that dominates today? Regardless, the advent of Bitcoin is rekindling these ideas within a new community, offering profound solutions and positive outcomes for civilization through exposure to humanity's hardest form of money, Bitcoin. Stay tuned and remember to subscribe for the latest recaps, insights, and films about all things Bitcoin. This is 21 Voices. If you want to watch another episode, try this one here.